My name is Jerry Grayling. I am the head of student finance for the college. I have a team who deals with anything undergraduate funding related issues my team deals with. That involves both scholarships, bursaries, loans, all of that, but also it involves living cost elements, um, what, it, you know, what it means to study at Imperial and what, how much it will cost you, um, general advice on funding, anything to do with funding or welfare element of it, um, my team deals with. This is our website, and there's a lot of information on there. Uh, I'll speak a little bit later about where you can apply and the different types of funding you can get. One of those funding is government funding, which you apply through Student Finance England. And our website, and most institutions, to make it easy for you, um, will have, will call their, this sort of part of their operation student finance. So our website is imperial slash student finance and you should be able to get that. And most other institutions operate in the same way. Okay, so this is our website and I'll go in a little bit more detail later on. But basically you click on the under pers prospectus, pr prospective um, undergraduate and um, there's a lot of information under there. But I'll cover some of my slides. And we can come back to that. Okay, so I'm going to, these are my slides. The, probably the most important thing that you can take away from today is our website address, Imperial slash student finance, because all of the information and a load more is on our website. Okay. So we're going to talk a little bit about what it will cost you to study at Imperial and the funding elements available. Basically, there are two funding elements, government support and institutional support. So Student Finance England and Imperial. And when we talk to, about Student Finance England, you're going to have two types of support, tuition fee support and maintenance. Um, so, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that. When we talk about the Imperial support that you can get, we call it Imperial Financial Support Package because it has a little bit of everything. It covers tuition fee waivers, it covers bursaries, but basically it's bursaries and then we deal with the bursary in different ways. Okay, so when I talk about Imperial bursaries, I am actually talking about the financial support package. I'll try to remember to use the right terminology. So one of the functions that my team does is they assess what it really costs our students to study at Imperial in terms of accommodation, all the non-tuition fee elements of it. And we are very generous because we want to make sure that students don't under budget or parents don't under budget for students. I, for a normal undergraduate not studying medicine, we're probably talking about 11,000 um, uh, pounds. Maybe before I start anything else, these slides will be, are, are already available on our website, so you should be able to find them there. So, we talk about 11,000 pounds, but I, I'm very confident to say that most of our students um, don't need that amount of money. They probably need about seven and a half, eight, eight and a half thousand pounds. We do these because we advise um, students who have to take out federal loans from America and many other bodies. Uh, we advise them on cost of living, and we want to make sure that we give very you know, u universal information to everyone. So we quote 11,000, and we'll come back to this slide um, because I'm going to give you a summary of all the funding that you get, and then you'll see we actually we get to the 11,000 very easily. Okay. So let's talk about tuition fees. All undergraduate home and EU tuition fees at Imperial is 9,000 pounds for 1314. Um, you can take out a home students can take out a loan from Student Finance England to cover the whole 9,000 um, pounds. You don't have to be means tested, which means you don't have to provide your household income information to them. We'll talk a little bit about that in a while. Um, and everyone sort of qualifies for that amount, including EU students qualify for that as well. Okay. You apply to, to Student Finance England for that funding, and we get it. That's, there's not a, a big admin process with regards to tuition fees. So when we talk about tuition fees, we've been doing two years of modeling on this from when the government first announced it. And, and really, we don't, tuition fees isn't the bit that, um, that concerns at, us at all. I don't think that should be a concern for you too much. 
So we spoke about Student Finance England. They have two types of financial support, tuition fees and maintenance. The maintenance uh, bit is divided into two again, loans and grants. So loans, money that you have to repay, grants, free money. If we look at the loan element of it, because uh, Student Finance England recognizes that living in London is a little bit more expensive than living in Leeds or Southampton or Birmingham. Um, they, we have a special rate, and if you currently live at home, and while you're studying at Imperial, you continue to live at home, you qualify for £4,375. If you decide to live in student accommodation or privately, not with mom and dad who lives in London, then um, you can qualify for up to £7,600 with a loan. 65% um, of this loan is means tested, so that means that you can go to Student Finance England and ask for 65% of that 7,600 without providing financial information. That's about 5,800 pounds that you can get without, it doesn't matter what your household income is. And then there are obviously the 35% that is household um, income dependent. So let me give you the tuition fee or the loan bits in broad strokes. So students will only have to start paying any loan that they take out back from April, the April after they finish their studies. Uh, that means April 2016. Um, they won't have to pay a cent or a penny before then. And uh, even in April 16, they will still have to um, earn 21,000 pounds before they have to pay it back. So regardless of whether they have a job or not, if, they don't, if they're not earning 21,000 pounds, then they don't have to pay anything back. How the payback works is they take your salary and any bit, that your sal any bit of the salary that's above £21,000, you pay interest and uh, a, a sort of a capital element on that difference. And so the example there is if you earn £25,000, you're only going to have to pay back 9% of the £4,000 difference. Okay? Um, it's... The £30 there is based on £9,000 tuition fees, but it's not based on any additional maintenance loans that you might decide to take out. So the more loans, the higher you get. But honestly, £30 a month for £27,000 worth of debt um, is, is fairly generous in terms of financial sides of it. And then the, the loan gets written off after 30 years. Um, and you can obviously pay that back before then if you want. There's no penalty for doing so, but it gets written off after 30 years. Okay, not going to do that slide. I said it before, but this is really important. There are loads of information out there, and there, is lo there are loads of different terminology used by different companies and different institutions. And the basic part is, if it ends with loan, you have to pay it back. If it ends with anything else, generally, it means that it's money that you get to keep. It's free money. Um, and this, I say this because the more you look into funding, obviously it's my day job, I do this quite a bit, you get all of these different terminologies and it can get exhaustive. Um, so we spoke about taking out a loan at um, Student Finance England, but then there's also free money that they give. And the free money works differently. Free money, you have to um, uh, be income assessed. And if, for example, your income is under £25,000, then um, you qualify for a grant of 3354 and obviously that scale goes up, the more you earn, the less grant you will qualify for. Um, Student Finance England say that they feel it's reasonable for household income to be 42,600. So anyone with a household income of 42,600 will get some sort of bursary or some sort of grant um, that students don't have to pay back. Imperial on the other hand say, we live in London, so it's more expensive. And we don't think 42,600 is really representative. It's not really enough for a household. So we've raised that 42,600 to 60K. So in addition to any support that you get from um, Student Finance England, Imperial has its own scheme, and that scheme will provide funding to students with a household income up to 60,000 pounds. That's completely separate from the government funding. It's completely in addition to the government funding. Okay. So that bursary scheme or financial support package is 
um, divided into bands. And so what we do is we ask you to go to Student Finance England. You go there anyways to get a tuition fee loan and other funding elements, maintenance um, loan or grant. And they assess your household income. We take that household income and we put it through our system. And then wherever your household income falls in one of those bands, um, we then award you a financial support package or a bursary um, for that amount. Now, some bits of that support package will be a tuition fee waiver because the government says we have to give you a tuition fee waiver. And some um, bit of that money will be either a bursary or accommodation fee waiver you can choose. Um, we generally uh, prefer to pay it out bursaries because it helps with the everyday living expenses. Um, so just to emphasize, this is an addition to any funding that you get from SLC or from Student Finance England. So we have a student calculator, and um, I'll show you how that works. I, I suspect we'll get some questions, and I'll refer back to this. Um, so this is our student calculator page, and we ask you a few questions. And you, let's say your household income is 40,000 pounds. It's important to note that there's a difference between household income and sort of student finance household income, or they call it residual household income. And what student finance does is, is they take your, your pay slip, basically, and they, take, they give you waivers. If you have more children at university, they give you a discount. If you um, study yourself, they give you a discount. And so there are quite a few discounts that they give you eventually to get to a residual household income. So you see, I say, oh, I have two other children. Um, or I have a brother and sister, for example, um, at university. And um, I'm just selecting randomly. I don't really care. I want to show focus on your pay slip says 40,000. We've developed this calculator that is mirrors the Student Finance England financials, so we can tell you what, they, what you will likely qualify for with them. So you can see the 40,000 has become 36,000 because of other children at institution, uh, in higher education and things like that that has been discounted. And it tells you which band you are in, band D. And then what our calculator also does is it gives you a breakdown of all the support that you will get both from us and from the government. And it's not 100% accurate, but it is very, very close. Um, Student Finance England doesn't want to give us this exact um, calculations, but we've spent a lot of work in developing this. Okay. So an important part of our calculator, it's for home students only because the rules for different nationalities or different domiciles are so vast and we don't necessarily have the resources to deal with that. But I think for home students, this is really a good tool to see a receive a comprehensive look at what funding is available from, from Student Finance England and from us. Okay, so we'll come back to this a little bit later, I think, um, again. And everywhere, so like I, thought I said that this is only for home English students, everywhere where something is just for home English students, we would give you advice of where to go if you're from a different domicile. So remember this College Band D, if we go back to the slide, um, College Band D then obviously falls into that bracket and you'll get a, a bursary or a financial support package of 3,800. Some of it will be tuition fee waiver, some of it will be cash. Okay. In addition to all of this funding, um, which let me tell you a little bit about the process of the funding. So you apply to Student Finance England. Um, once you have an offer from Imperial, we pick that up and we get your information from Student Finance England. We know which band you are in. We correspond with you and say, because you're in that band, we're going to give you this amount of money. And then we ask you to give, you, give us your bank details. And then once you've registered, we pay you. You don't have to apply for the funding. It, you automatically, we pick it up and we give it to you. Last year, we had 100, or 1,618 students who qualified for funding, and 1,618 students received their funding without having to apply for it. I think that's important. The other important bit of our financial support package is that if you, receive, if you remain in the same band, you receive the same amount of funding across all four years of study, or all your years of study, three or four years, depending on your degree. So 
other institutions, our main competitors, you will find that they will give you quite a bit of money in year one, but when you go to year two, year three, year four, that amount of money decreases. And it's a little trick, but Imperial isn't really into tricks. We want to give and help students so they can focus on the academics, uh, academic side of it. And so we give you the same amount of funding throughout the four years. Okay. So if we talk about scholarships, in addition to all of this funding, we also have 150 scholarships. And some of the scholarships are tuition fees based and some of it's maintenance based or living cost based. And we have two criteria for scholarships. We, some of our scholarships are academic excellence or potential. Um, that's a criteria. And we have scholarships that solely focus on financial need. Imperial realizes that you can have the best student in the world, but because of their financial household income, they might not qualify for a scholarship. And that's not really the way we operate. We give both cohorts of students, both types of students, we sort of try to look after them. Okay. 150 students, I spoke about 1,618 students um, in total. 500 of them were um, first year students. And you think we have 150 scholarships for 500 really needy students. Um, that covers quite a few um, people. Some of our scholarships are, most of the scholarships that my team deals with are Imperial scholarships. So it's fun, mo money that Imperial already has and we allocate it. But we also give advice of where to go for funding opportunities um, by external companies um, or institutions. And they are quite, there's quite a lot of resource out there, but we don't do more than just advise students of where to go because they have their own application process and their own... Um, selection process. So I spoke a little bit about the tuition fees element and I spoke about the maintenance element, but I've tried to sort of pull all of this together so that you can have a sense of the overall view. And so if you think about tuition fees, we said all tuition fees are 9,000. You can get a loan for the whole 9,000. If you are in a certain income band under 60,000 pounds, you will qualify for a tuition fee waiver this way or the other, depending on your household income. And so if you're under 25,000 pounds, you can qualify for a tuition fee waiver of up to 2,500 pounds. If you, that 2,500, we let Student Finance England know, so they automatically reduce your loan, your 9,000 pound loan, by 2,500 pounds. So your tuition fee is only 6,500 pounds, if I can do my math. Students start paying interest on their loans from the very first day, the very first payment that student loans company makes to institutions. And some institutions have decided because incomes can vary but throughout the year that they're only going to pay their tuition fee waivers at the end of the year. But that means that students will accrue interest on the whole 9,000 for that whole year. And Imperial, we don't necessarily think that that's the right thing to do. So we're going to pay the tuition fee waivers up front before the very first installment. So you only start paying interest on the 6,500 and not on the 9,000 um, pounds tuition fee loan. Okay. And so we have some scholarships that deal with tuition fees, but I haven't included in the slide. And honestly, from a financial perspective, the tuition fees bit for me is the easiest. And it's the bit that we don't really have to put too much thinking into it because the government provides us with the tools to really cover it. If we look at the maintenance bit, remember I spoke about um, our bursary scheme and up to £6,000. Um, if you're in a certain income band, then you will get that bursary. If we add there the maintenance, you remember we had this slide where we said if you have different income bands, you get free money from the government as well. That can go be up to £3,350. They are different scales in between these four major points. There are different scales there um, depending on your household income. So that's where I get that 3350 And then in addition to that free money, remember they don't end with loans so it's free money. You don't have to pay it back. Um, you also have a loan element so you can also take a loan to subsidize any shortfall that you have. And then we have the scholarships. So Potentially, excluding the loan or the scholarships element, you have funding to your disposal of up to fourteen and a half thousand pounds, which is a lot of money for any student. And we don't think students need that amount of money, undergraduates specifically, but that's what potentially you're able to get. If we go back all the way to the beginning, 
we started with this slide, and I said, well, actually, students can live with eight and a half, but as a maximum, as a really good, um, comfortable student, 11,000 is probably where they should be targeting. So if you think about 11,000, if I go back to that slide, you're already at 14,000. And what that difference means is that you can take out less of a loan for, to cover your maintenance cost every year because of the other funding elements that's out there. So you take less a loan and you receive more grants and bursaries at Imperial. Okay. I can come back to that if we have questions. So you can do all the planning in the world, but sometimes once you're here, and we find this with students, one day, once they at Imperial, they find themselves in trouble. They either didn't budget correctly, or they did, but things went haywire. For example, two years ago we had, or, yeah, we had the Pakistani floods. There's nothing those students can do to, you know, to plan for that. And we, as an institution, have mechanisms to deal with situations like that. So the funding that we have is not um, for tuition fees. It's for maintenance. It's to get through the day, get through the week, get through the month. And it's to make sure that they have food on the table and their rent is paid and things like that. It is a fund for emergencies. It is a fund that we... And it's there to help students if things go wrong. But I think it's important to realize the message or to hear the message in that Imperial doesn't just stop by giving you money up front. Once you're here and you find yourself in a situation, we have mechanisms and systems to deal with helping you out. Imperial is an institution. It's really difficult to get in. Academically, you have to be excellent. Once you're here, the workload is really hard because it's academically excellent. You don't need to worry about finances. The institution doesn't want you to worry about finances. So we make sure our financial support package is really one of the best ones out there. We make sure it's consistent throughout the years. And we make sure that once you're here and everything um, that you planned for, things slip through the cracks, we make sure we have mechanisms to help you. And we're talking about hundreds of thousands of pounds that we help students with um, from this fund alone. To give you an idea of overall financial support, we probably give about seven to probably eight and a half million pounds of support every year to our students, um, undergraduates only, not postgraduates. So Imperial really does look after its students from an academic point of view, or from a financial point of view, I suppose from an academic point of view as well.